Section 11D allows us to claim a deduction for repairs. Now, before I climb into this, I want you to just get your mind in the correct space here. The idea behind this section is SARS wants you to, if your assets are getting damaged, or are were damaged and you are repairing them, they want you to be able to claim that as a deduction. But what they don't want you to do is they don't want you to make your asset better. And by better, I don't mean fixing something that's a problem. They don't want you to improve the asset. Because if you are improving the asset, you are actually having a capital expense, and capital expenses might qualify for capital allowances. So they don't want taxpayers to hide a capital amount, which again you have to claim over a couple of years maybe. They don't want you to try and claim that as a deduction. So that's the idea behind it. So SARS is not trying to be unfair here or anything strange. They just want you to comply with the law. So let's look at what this means then, what repairs mean. So the first thing I want you to understand is what you think of as a repair is something is broken and I fix it, something is damaged and I fix it. That's exactly what it is. But there's a couple of maybe little things that I just need to figure, uh, discuss with you that we need to figure out together. So, first up again, the preamble says you are allowed to claim a deduction if you are carrying on a trade. So again, you must be carrying on a trade. What are you allowed? Expenditure actually incurred during the year of assessment on the repairs of property. Well, let's actually do it like this. On the repairs of property occupied for the purpose of trade. So let's quickly talk about it. What is a property that you occupy for the purpose of trade? It means, for example, the building, your office building, your factory building, your warehouse. Okay, so that type of property. Or in respect of which income is receivable. So property which is occupied for trade, so your building, or property in, re in respect of which income is receivable. So this means if I have rental property, so I rent out a flat to someone and there's repairs there, I can claim it as a deduction. They say including any expenditure so incurred on the treatment against attack by beetles of any timber for any part of such property and sums expended for the repairs of machinery, implements, utensils, and other articles employed by the taxpayer for the purpose of his trade. So beetles, obviously, guys, insects that eat the wood, if you see that specifically, but more common, sums expended for the repair of machinery, implements, utensils, and other articles employed by the taxpayer for the purpose of his trade. If you employ something, it means you use it for your personal trade. So they want you to be able to claim repairs for machines, implements, or tools, utensils, other tools, and other articles. Furniture, computers, anything of those which you are using for your trade. So they want you to be able to claim repairs. Now, in Interpretation Note 74, they discuss a number of principles. I am discussing on the slides. Again, you are welcome and encouraged to read through the Interpretation Note as well to see it directly from SARS or the horse's mouth. Okay, so we've had a couple of court cases and there are some of the principles. So the first thing is, what does the word repair mean? There's no definition for it in the Act. So we will view repair, we will understand what repairs mean in the way that we understand what it means in everyday language. In other words, the word that you would find, in the, the, the definition that you would find in the dictionary. So if something is broken and you fix it. The courts have said, that they say that a repair is the replacement or the renewal of something that has been worn down by use which could include wear and tear or defaced means it's broken or damaged. So they say if you replace or renew something, renew means fix it. So if you have a, a cell phone, right, and the screen is damaged and you replace the screen, that's a replacement of the screen, that's a repair. Maintenance will be allowed as a deduction under Section 11D. It will also usually be under the general deduction format in any way. But as long as you can show that there's been damage. So maintenance means that you must see that something is starting to go a little bit damaged and getting a bit worn. So in other words, this is an important concept here. And this came from a court case called the Fleming case. Again, case's name is not important, the principle is. It says, an asset that is in perfect working order cannot qualify for a Section 11 D deduction because there must be a repair, it must be damaged. Okay, so here's an example. I rent out of this property to people, okay, so I can claim a deduction for it. Now, 
I want to paint it. If the paint on this thing is peeling, it's old, it's damaged, cracked, and I paint it, it's a repair. If the paint there is perfectly nice, I just want to change the color, it's not a repair. Okay, because it must be damaged. So here are some of the important principles. So I'm going to go through them and talk and give you some examples as we speak. So the first thing is, repair is the restoration by renewal or replacement, that's what we already saw, of subsidiary parts of the whole. That's very important, that concept. It's a repair is a restoration by renewal or replacement of subsidiary part of the whole. Wow, it's a big sentence, massive words, okay, big mouthful. What does it mean? It means if you're replacing part of something, of an asset, that's a repair. If you replace the entire asset, it is not. Okay, so let me explain to you the following. Here's a building, we use it for our trade. There's a wind, can you see? And the wind comes and blows away the roof. Now, I have to put up a new roof. Is that a repair of, because is that a subsidiary part of the whole, is that a part of the whole asset? Now, I'm replacing the entire roof. Yes, I'm replacing the entire roof, but the roof forms part of this building. That's the entire asset. So it is a repair. I'm only replacing the roof, even if it's the entire roof. Okay, now we have the house and there's a raging fire and the fire comes and destroys the parental property and I have to rebuild an entire new property. That is not a repair because I'm replacing the entire asset. Okay, that's not a repair. That's the first concept there. Here's the next example. If you reconstruct the whole asset, it will not be a repair. Now, very important over here. The materials used to make the repair does not have to be identical to the material that is being used. Okay, I'm going to give you that. And then the next one I want to just talk about. Repairs must be distinguished from improvements. If you have an improvement, you are not allowed to claim it as capital in nature. Okay, now... This is, we look into a room. Can you see it? Okay, we look into this room over here. And in this room, there's a carpet. The window is, is a hailstorm. The window is broken. And it rains onto this carpet and hails onto it. And the carpet is destroyed. Badly damaged. Okay. I go and I put in a new carpet. Cost us 10,000 rands. Put in a new carpet. Is that a repair? If it's a whole carpet? Yes, it is a repair because it's still part of the whole. The carpet forms part of this building. Okay. There was a carpet in previously, put in another carpet. Now, we're still looking into this room. The carpet is damaged on either side. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put in tiles instead. And the tiles cost 50,000. Now, is that a repair or improvement? Okay, so, a lot of students, majority of students will always, and I do this deliberately, I've done this gig and this bit a lot of times, a lot of students will immediately say, the tiles are an improvement. So, you know, you claim a deduction for it. Now, most of the reason why you're feeling like it is because of your own personal preference. You might think tiles are better than a carpet. Okay, and yes, there are benefits there, but you can clean it and all those things better. But, does it substantially improve this asset? So in other words, let's say that this was a property that was being rented out. And you are paying 5,000 rands a month to stay there. So it rains in and the landlord has to replace the tiles. And now immediately when you replace the, the, the tiles, it says to you, now you have to pay me 8,000 rands a month. Is that going to happen? That's not going to happen. You might in future do it, but it doesn't substantially improve the value of it. The, what is the function of the carpet? Let me ask you that. The function of the carpet is to cover the floor. What's the function of the tiles? To cover the floor. Now, if at the same time when I had those tiles put in, I put in underfloor heating, that would be an improvement. Because previously the floor could not heat, now it can. So please understand that. The fact that also over here, and I did this deliberately, the tiles cost more, doesn't necessarily mean that it improves it. Again, I'm not saying, I'm not giving the rule here. I'm not saying that... If you put tiles in, it's definitely always a 
repair. I will say though, if for some reason in the question they say, you charge 5,000 rands a month, and now because of the tiles, you can immediately charge 8,000 rands a month. That's definitely an improvement then. But you have to see in the question, in the context of the question, that it is an improvement. For the most part, when tiles replace the carpet, it is not an improvement. Okay, that concept applies there. Now, there's one comment I also just want to make here. We don't often see it, but let's say that you have a computer okay this is the screen <laughs> screen I'm a fantastic artist this is a computer screen this computer screen was purchased in 1992 now lightning strikes it let's say it's part of this I just want you to understand it will get the concept in a second here it's part of this computer for whatever reason okay and Inside the screen from 1992 is a black and white tube. Right, so the screen only shows black and white. Now, Harding hits it. You can replace part of the screen. I don't want you to. I, I want you to still view it as part of the asset. Let's say you can just replace that black and white tube. But because black and white tubes are no longer available, you can only put in a color one. Now that improves the asset. Okay. Again, assume this is an improvement. But because you can't put in the old one, the old parts, that stars will still allow this as a repair. So if you improve it, okay, you guys within reason, if you improve it just because of the fact that old parts aren't available, stars will still view it as a repair. Okay. Also important, you must be using the asset in the production of income. So if I am, let's say I've got a, a building here, a, a house here that I want to rent out, it's completely dilapidated. If I paint it before, if so, I can't rent it out to someone. Let's say it's, I can't, and now I paint and repair it. That's not a repair because I'm not using it in the production of income yet. I need to be able to rent it out and it needs to be able to be occupied before I can do that. Remember, if I go back, the tell you it must be property occupied for the trade or in respect of which income is receivable. If I can't yet receive income, then I cannot claim a deduction for it.